Do your weekly, your weekly hello. Go away. All right, go chew that. Hello everyone. It is almost the new year. It is currently the middle of December right now and I am so excited for 2022. I feel like the past two years have just kind of been crappy, but trying to get in the Christmas spirit. I got the rocking around. This is like a huge pajama shirt from Target. Totally recommend. Today I'm going to be talking about the best and worst books that I read in 2021. These are the books that I liked and the books that I disliked. It's completely my opinion. If you have a different opinion, please let me know in the comments below. Hello. I'm a very open-minded person. Even some of my very favorite books, I understand others' opinions and I understand why they don't like it. So if you don't like some of my favorite books, just let me know what your favorite was this year, okay? And at the end of this video, I will be talking about some of my reading goals for next year. So if you're interested in hearing those or if you share the same goals, definitely go and check out that little section. I will timestamp it so it's easy to skip there. So let's get right into this video. Sorry, that was kind of a long-winded intro. I do own copies of the books that I'm about to talk about, but I'm just gonna end up putting like a picture on either side of me of the book so I don't have to get them off of my shelf. It's just gonna be a pain in the butt. The best and worst books of 2021 in the fantasy genre. So we're starting off with fantasy. I would say I love fantasy books, but I more lean towards the fantasy romance side of books. So the best fantasy book I read was definitely A Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This book just hit different for me. I think it was due to the fact that I was already introduced to the From Blood and Ash series. I was familiar with that world and then being reintroduced to a, the same world but new characters really sparked my interest in the whole series again. I read From Blood and Ash earlier this year so then rereading this book really brought back that fire in my heart for the series and these characters and Nikdos, Jesus. He just won my heart. And I know I've talked about this book in a previous video. A lot of these books I have, so you might hear some repeats. Oh, <laughs> I got a, got a little guy. That was definitely the best fantasy book I read this year. Okay, and the worst... I don't want to say worst, but it's definitely the worst. <laughs> the worst series I actually read in 2021 in the fantasy genre is Serpent and Dove. I hated Blood and Honey. Is that what it's called? Is that... Is that even what the, sorry, I have my laptop up. Urban and Dove, Blood and Honey. Yeah, Blood and Honey was my absolute least favorite book I've ever read. I actually think that Blood and Honey had that middle book syndrome where it just did not do well at all, in my opinion. It was very exaggerated. I thought it could have wrapped up in one book. Like I thought Serpent and Dove, if there was a conclusion on that, I was happy with the end of Serpent and Dove too. And I was like, okay, cool, be done, be done. You don't need any, you don't need two more books, nothing like that. There was such a lack of character development and there was miscommunication constantly. Even by the third book, you you think that the characters would have grown up a little bit or moved on and they didn't. It's not until the last like 20% that you kind of see like a development and it's like, all right, well, it's three books in and almost done. So this is kind of pointless. I know this is a really loved series. So I'm sorry if I upset you. It just happened to really disappoint me. I went into it with such high hopes and maybe that's my bad and came out very disappointed. Okay and really quick going back to the best fantasy I will say this in every single video if I have to. Dark Fever absolutely the best fantasy series I've read ever. I kind of read this last year but I read the last book. I read the most recent this year so it still kind of counts okay. Dark Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning. I didn't technically read it this year but I will mention it in every video until someone in the comments down below tells me that they've read it too. We are moving on to the young adult genre and with young adult I think 2021 was really the time for me to realize that I don't click. I just don't click with young adult anymore and that's okay I'm not a young adult I am am I a young adult is 23 young adult maybe it is I don't know I'm kind of the new adult okay whatever I just don't click with it anymore <laughs> and that's okay I'm allowed to grow up I'm allowed to move on so the best book in the young adult genre that I read was definitely Legendborn. I think this series, whatever it becomes, is gonna be amazing. What made it so good was the integration with 
her with Brie, the main character, her lineage and heritage and learning more about her history. Oh, it was beautiful. It was so well done, immersed into that kind of fantasy element. It kind of just really encaptured that campus lifestyle of UNC Chapel Hill. My stepdad went there, so I've kind of got like a familiar sense of the campus already. So it was really cool just reading that book. She's going to this campus and ends up seeing like some really shady shit going on and it's kind of thrown into this fantastical world. There is kind of that love triangle thing going on. A little bit of like Clockwork Angel-ish vibes. I just read Clockwork Angel. I'm currently reading Clockwork Prince so maybe that's just on my mind but it's kind of like that. She can see demons. There's a good boy and a bad boy and she's kind of stuck in between. It's kind of similar, okay? I'm just gonna admit, I don't know, it was amazing and I cannot wait for the rest of the series to come out. The worst young adult book I read. I read a lot of bad young adult this year, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of torn between two books for this category um, and I decided to go with the one I DNF'd, which is An Ember in the Ash by Saba Tahir. I DNF'd the third book. So I read two, the first book, An Ember in the Ashes, I gave five stars. A Torch Against the Night, I gave three stars. And then the third, what is it? A Reaper at the Gates, I DNF'd because I just, it was dragging on. It was dragging on. I was so over it. I wasn't into what was going on. I kind of just didn't care. And I think that that series really showed me that I'm kind of not into the young adult genre anymore. I think I got the wrong impression when I picked up the book. I thought it was gonna be a little bit older and it wasn't. It is a great adventure sort story. So if you're looking for kind of a good adventure, you'll like it, okay? Okay, the next category is the best and worst romance books I read. And I didn't think I was that into romance until this year. I picked up a lot of contemporary romance. I'm gonna give credit to the book talk community. I think book talk, Instagram reels, everything blew up this genre in general this year, like Colleen Hoover, Emily Henry, Allie Hazelwood, like a ton of authors blew up in the contemporary romance genre this year. And I'm very thankful for that because now I found a genre that I'm really, really into. The best romance I read this year is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, in my opinion. Now I did read The Spanish Love Deception also like a few weeks ago. I've read a lot of Colleen Hoover books this year, but I would say that The Love Hypothesis definitely takes the cake on this one. Like I was in love with the main hero and the heroine was good. I loved her. And I think the banter, the bickering back and forth, the climax, you know, the part that you're waiting for, it was just perfect. The Love Hypothesis really blew me away. But I'm filming this in the middle of December. I'm currently reading The Unhoneymooners, which was gifted to me by a subscriber from my Amazon wishlist. Thank you very much, Taylor. But I'm reading it right now and I'm only 50 pages in and I freaking love it. I think that could take the cake on favorite. As of right now, The Love Hypothesis is the best in my opinion. Okay, it's like a week later. I'm posting this video in a few days and I finished The Unhoneymooners. I don't know which is better, but I think, honestly, I would say The Unhoneymooners took The Love Hypothesis is position. The only downside of The Unhoneymooners that I can think of right now is there was no steam, like none at all. Whereas The Love Hypothesis had a very, very steamy, fan fiction-y sex scene and The Unhoneymooners did not. So if you're looking for a very steamy, steamy scene, maybe The Love Hypothesis would be better but I will say the sexual tension and the buildup and the bickering in the Unhoneymooners definitely was better than it was in the Love Hypothesis. So I'm torn between the two. I think they tied. I'm gonna let them tie. Now the worst. This was really tough because I haven't disliked any romance books I read this year. I have not given under three stars to any romance, but I would say like if I were to put it on a tier ranking list, Heartbones by Colleen Hoover would probably be my least favorite. And I think it's because, like I said previously, I'm kind of getting over the young adult genre. And this was definitely the youngest romance I read and there just wasn't that connection, there wasn't that steam. I couldn't relate to the characters because they were younger. Not that I can't read younger characters, it just, in my opinion, I couldn't relate to the high school, you know, I just couldn't. <laughs> but that is not saying that that was a bad book, it was just the worst one that I read this year. I don't want to say that it was a bad, like, I loved this book and I gave it three and a half stars, I just couldn't relate. 
and I thought that the Colleen Hoover twist at the end just wasn't it was kind of just bleh so it wasn't my favorite and I think that next year is definitely gonna be a year of contemporary romance for me I just want to dive deep so the next category is mystery slash thriller if you've been following me for a little bit you know that I don't read mystery or thriller books really at all <laughs> I don't like them but I did read like four this year so I'm gonna count it as a category and we're gonna go from there. <laughs> the best thriller mystery book I read was Layla by Colleen Hoover. When I picked up Layla, I just read this actually in December, so this will be a part of my December wrap up too, but I just read Layla thinking it was a contemporary romance. I went into it thinking, oh, this is gonna be a really cute story about just a boy and a girl, maybe a girl named Layla. Like I, I went into it thinking it was not paranormal at all. Lo and behold, I get halfway through and there's a ghost involved so I was like huh definitely surprised me and by the end of it I was like not where I thought it was going but so good very much worth the shock in my opinion I was shocked I was like what this is mystery thriller I was like what is going on I had no clue very happy that I read it so good definitely took me by surprise maybe that's why it's my favorite because I was just absolutely shocked by the end of it. The worst mystery thriller. If you look this up on Google, it doesn't say it's mystery thriller, but I'm going to count it as mystery thriller because the end, I was like, what? It was a mystery to me. And I'm going to say the worst mystery thriller book I read was The Atlas Six. Now, I know, again, it's not really mystery thriller. It's more fantasy. Like it is a fantasy book. That is what it is categorized as. The whole book you are wondering. There is kind of that whole mystery element to the book. I know it is not a mystery thriller book, but to me it was a mystery. Like I was, I wasn't confused the whole time because it was a good book up until the last 10%. But watch my November wrap up if you want to hear a rant on that book. The last like 10 20 percent i was like i really was wondering what the hell was going on so in my opinion it counts as a mystery book okay if you disagree with me cool <laughs> and again i don't read a lot in this category so don't come for me i'm not a pro on the mystery thriller book section of goodreads or the bookstore like don't come for me okay okay we have gotten to the last category this is the best and worst fiction book because i read a lot of freaking fiction. I don't think I read one nonfiction book this year. So the best fiction book I read was A Man Called Ove. I have talked about this book a million and ten times so I'm not gonna give a synopsis or tell you about it here. It just was the best fiction book I read. It was the most normal book I read. I feel like there was no fantasy. There was no romance. It was straight fiction. Like it was just it is the most fiction you can get. By far the best book. I'm not gonna talk about it. I've talked about it too many times. The worst this one I will talk about was The Lost Apothecary. This is technically like a historical fiction slash mystery kind of book. Like it could have gone in the worst mystery, but I'm putting it in fiction because I didn't like it. I liked it when I read it. And then looking back, I was like, compared to other books that I read, I was like, yeah, I didn't like that book. Like I was kind of just trudging through it. And I did do a reading vlog on this. This was one of my very first reading vlogs. I did not dislike the book. I don't want to put that out there, you know, put out a fake review saying that I did like it when I didn't because I did I did like it but looking back on all of the fiction books I've read this one would fall at the bottom I will say I think that it falls at the bottom more so because of my interest I just don't think I'm very interested in what the book was about what really pissed me off was the end <laughs> because the end the whole book she's on this journey she's finding something it's kind of a mystery of what she's doing and then you figure it out and she finds what she wants to find and then she gets rid of it that's not a spoiler like it just happens and it's just you know i was annoyed okay with that that is all i just did five categories right there and this is a lot of footage i'm kind of racking up on footage right now but let's get into some of my 2022 reading goals. So looking back on 2021, I had a goal of 80 books because I did not start my reading goal journey this year until March. I read 16 books in March and that was kind of the start for me. January and February, I was going through some stuff with school, college, so I only read like two or three books in that time frame. Not a lot happened in January and February, but March hit and I just took off. I took off running. I read 16 books. Looking back in December right now to March, it's kind of upsetting because I don't remember 
some of the books that I read. Like I want to reread those because it's not that I, it was just a lot of fucking books, you know? I think in 2022, I want to take it easy. I am 95 books into my 2021 goal. So I surpassed 80 books and I'm trying to get to hundred right now because I'm at 95. But I really genuinely think that next year, I just want to read 80 books. I'm going to cut it at 80, not like cut it. If I end up reading more or less, then that's okay. I don't want to stress or put pressure on myself with reading. I still want to enjoy it. So I'm not gonna be like, oh, I need to read 12 books a month. Like that's great. I can do that, but I don't really want to. So I'm giving myself like a five to 10 book per month limit. If I hit 100 books again next year, cool. If I don't, cool. I'm just going to set my goal as 80 again. Another goal of mine would be to read more science fiction and mystery thriller. I do a really good job with fantasy romance and romance, but I think I really did enjoy the books that I read that were mystery and thriller and science fiction. I didn't read many science fiction books this year and I love science fiction. I really do. I read so much science fiction in middle school and high school and then I just kind of stopped and I kind of want to get back into that a little bit more. So if you guys have any suggestions, for science fiction or mystery and thriller please let me know in the comments below I need some good recommendations it's kind of a genre I'm scared to dip my toes into the next goal that I have would be to join a book club or create a book club but if I create one I don't know who's gonna join it I don't want like two people in a book club I want to I want a handful of people so we can have a discussion about the books but I I'm kind of nervous. I'm still new to the booktube community. I don't have many booktube friends. I don't know how to start a book club, but I would love to join one. <laughs> I would love to be a part of a community who loves books. Okay, that is it for this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. My new posting schedule is every Saturday. So I think Saturday is when most of my subscribers are on YouTube and that's when I wanna post. I wanna post when most of you guys will see my videos. All of my links are down below but have a good week i will see you guys next time Lily wants to come <laughs> he's got his phone look he's got his christmas sweater on we're all getting in the christmas spirit around here